Welcome everybody to Notary Stars Unlimited. This is a free monthly event hosted by notarystars.com and Unlimited Inc. Notary. This event is pre-planned for the entire year with topics to help guide you through 2022 based on where we are as signing agents. So tonight's episode is titled, Are You Really a Mobile Notary? At Notary Stars, we believe that education never ends no matter where you are in your career. Your resume only looks better with more credentials on it. Um, side note, if you're watching this on the replay, check the link at the bottom of the video um, to be sure and register for next month's presentation. Today is Wednesday, April 20th, and my name is Beth Hathout. I will be your MC for the evening. I'm an instructor at Notary Stars, a 20 plus notary and loan signing agent, 20 plus year notary and loan signing agent. And I have a background in escrow and title at a local title agency here in the Valley. I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Ronnie Nickel, founder and co-owner of Unlimited Ink Notary and NotaryStars.com. And the man behind the curtain is Travis Myers. He runs the Unlimited Ink side of the company. He's also a co-owner and a contributor um, to NotaryStars.com. If you're not completely familiar with this family of companies, Unlimited Ink Notary is a signing service founded by Ronnie Nickel, and it's grown into a nationwide signing agent agency that currently has presence in nine states and offers signings to notaries in all 50 states. Um, notary Stars is the training side of the company, um, and Notary Stars has filmed over 145 hours of training on just about every loan product and signature variants under the sun. Notary Stars also offers live training four days a week and phone support um, to notaries no matter who they're working with. So Mr. Mickle, would you like to get this party started? I sure would. First of all, I wanna thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Um, I We pre-planned these uh, events for you. So we have three that were already filmed. This is our fourth one this year. Um, and this one is titled, and we tried to do them in succession so that it creates a journey for those watching them in the future. Cause we have to think about those of us now and those of one, those of us watching it in the future. And I mean, our brother and sister notaries. Uh, tonight's episode is titled, um, are you really a mobile notary? And um, I really thought this was part of the notary journey. We started out with goal setting. We've we've done a few topics, but I want to talk to you guys about tonight about are you really a mobile notary? Uh, you come into this industry um, and self-included and you think, OK, I'm going to set up a printer. I'm going to get my notary stamp. I'm going to learn these documents and then business is going to come. And it's very important to understand the evolution of this career. And I just gave a presentation today to the American Escrow Association. Um, just so you guys know, um, I got to the level of success that I'm at today with a multi-million dollar signing agency because of a mobile printer and a mobile scanner. Had that not been a part of my journey, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And I want to explain to you um, not just about mobile printers and mobile scanners. We're going to talk about things that you should have on hand inside your in your vehicle um, as a notary loan signing agent, especially for notary loan signing agents. Um, when you call yourself a mobile notary, there are things that you should have on hand. I actually went to Beth's house today uh, to do my presentation. So I was sitting at her desk earlier today, which is really cool. She has a really awesome office. Um, there's a reason I use a virtual screen because I am not as organized as she is. Uh, <laughs> but um, full disclosure, uh, but I am very organized when it comes to my vehicle, my car, uh, all of the things. And we have three samples for you today. We have Eden Chase, who's also been an instructor at Notary Stars. Um, we have Travis, who's my business partner, and we have Beth examples for you for what should be in the car. But I do want to start the conversation and I don't want to turn you off to the idea of having a mobile printer or a mobile scanner. Let me start the conversation exactly like this. If your business model is to be a part-time notary, you may not need a mobile printer or mobile scanner. I am not urging you to go out and buy products that you may not use or may not need. If you are not a notary that's striving for more business, 
it is perfectly fine for you to operate your business the way you choose and see fit. With that said, though, there are still items that you might find in, in this tonight session that you might want to keep in hand or organizational skills that you might want to have um, to better yourself as a mobile notary, even if you're only part time. But defining factor. I've been in this for 12 years. Um, the, I always tell you I'm no better than you. The only difference between you and me is time. And I've tried everything. I've signed up for every company. I know what works and know what doesn't. And then I started my own company. When I got my mobile printer was the defining and pivotal moment of when I crossed the financial um, threshold. I saw, and I want to go back to the beginning of my career. You had to call me three days in advance minimum where I was just like, I can't do your closing. You could carry a chip on your shoulder back then because there were only a fraction of us out there. I watched cell phones come into play. You know, the first cell phone came in, uh, iPhone was put on sale, I think 2007. I was out doing signings in 2010, we're now in 22. And there were no text messages when I first started. There were no signing order or snap docs. That came much later. You still had to call me. I still had to have your documents delivered or pick them up and return them. And now we have technology really controlling our lives for us. I really want to invite you guys to watch my presentation on YouTube. I'll email it out tonight um, for the American Escrow Association. But sometime during that journey, text messages started coming for these platforms that I was signing up for. And those text messages, I, I would watch them and I would be at a signing table and I'd be like, well, I could go do that, but I'd have to drive all the way back across town. Then I'd have to, you know, come back and do scan backs. And I thought this, and it never dawned on me to actually have a mobile printer or a mobile scanner. And then one day I, I thought to myself, I was like, God, how many signings am I missing? You know, how many am I missing? And it, I was never the notary that, you know, um, took offense to being asked to scan back something. And I want to harp on that for just a second. But I thought to myself, how many am I missing? Like, seriously, how many could I have done more in a month? And the first month, I went out and bought an $80 printer, which is still the printer that I suggest on uh, Notary Star's website under resources to this day. I believe it's the same one that Travis is going to showcase or a similar version. His might be a little bit bigger. Um, the first month that I had that, and I don't remember exact figures. I'm mean, getting older. Don't let the hair dye fool you. But there's a lot of gray in there, um, but I don't remember the exact figures, but it was somewhere upwards of 15 to $1,800 increase the first month I had the mobile printer. And I'll tell you where the defining moment was. I walked into, uh, we service a large title company. Um, if you guys have ever heard of Open Door, you know, we service their title company. We are their vendor for closings. They're our largest client for sure. We have 150 clients and all of most of them combined don't put in as many orders as Open Door does. It's a big deal. Um, when I interviewed with them, they had four or five signing agencies literally lined up at Starbucks across the street from when they were gonna open where they were gonna open their office. And I showed up at the interview with my mobile printer and mobile scanner. I was gonna be their first notary and then turn transition into managing their notary team which turned into me becoming their signing agency. When they saw the mobile printer and mobile scanner, they were like, wow, you're the real deal. And I was one of the first choices that they made. And now they get to make choices. They hired more than one signing agency. We prevailed, we are the preferred, we are their go-to. Um, that was a defining moment. When I started working with Fidelity, I almost as a direct notary did not get approved as per Fidelity. I walked in with a mobile printer, mobile scanner, that escrow officer, I'll never forget. She marched down the hall in her high heels and told corporate office, which is the office I was, she goes, I need him on my team or I'm gonna quit. Like that was her conversation. And when they're no longer approving notaries, I got approved. So it was a, a really great asset to have, not just to get business, but to be able to use it. Now, before I transition and start showing you best video and introducing Travis and Edie, um, by the way, Edie, if you start your camera, I can spotlight you as well, um, if you're ready. But um, another thing that I want to tell you is we live in a world where we get on Facebook and we're listening to notaries. And I know that's not you guys. You guys here tonight are watching this replay. You're seeking the right path. And we live in an industry where there's tons of people who can tell us 
how to run our business and how they think. And that stuff gets in our head and we start thinking that way too. And I always had the ability to read someone's post and turn it off and be like, well, maybe if I do it slightly different than me, they'll choose me over them. And we live on Facebook and you hear notaries say, I don't do scam bags. Well, you live in 2020, excuse me, 2022. <laughs> um, you know, everybody has access to an easy printer scanner. I know that you guys think that sometimes it's expensive, but think about the total startup cost for a mobile notary business to be up and running. It's usually under three grand, usually under two grand in most places, maybe even under $1,800 with just a printer and scanner and every basic tools and some training. Most companies that you open and you guys, no matter if you're wanting to be part-time or full-time, you are a business. You are a business, just like I'm a business. Your business to business, that's your customer. When someone says, I don't do scam bags, it's like, you know, going to Target and someone saying, I only do this. And you ask them for help. You know, you're asking someone for help and they're like, mm, sorry, I work in the jewelry department, not my department. Scam bags are used for many reasons. They can double check your work so that you get paid the full file fee. They um, help them fund faster in case the package is in transit and they need to close early. You have to become a problem solver, not a problem creator. And those people out there going, I don't do scan backs, a lot of them are in rural, rural areas and they have no choice but to use that notary because they're only one of five and the other four were booked. Um, or they're the only one of five and then the other four have terrible feedback. Um, but you want to be a problem solver. And yes, does it create a little bit more work? Does it take a little bit more time? Absolutely. But I'm telling you, when you actually consider the value that it adds to your business uh, to be able to print mobily or scan back, it's also saved my rear end a couple of times. I can't tell you how many times I've printed the wrong package and got to the front door and go, wait, this isn't the right one. And I just print it right out of my car um, or print it right at their table. Um, documents can be dragging and that escrow officer can be like, I promise you, I'm gonna get them to you uh, before the signing time, but I need you to still be on time. You're saving their rear end and their, uh, their client relationship. So you become an asset to them. So the notaries that say, I don't do scan bags, please don't let that get into your head. Please don't let that live with you. Maya Angelou says it best, and I don't know the exact quote, but she says, you know, be careful about the words because they get into your fibers of your clothes. They get into your curtains. They come home with you at night. They live there. Uh, it's a quote similar to that. And if anybody knows it, please type it in the chat. But don't let someone dictate to you uh, how you should be running your business. I want all of you guys to set yourself up for success. And that's what these episodes are about to kind of really drill it home and let you know uh, you're not alone. Trust me, I don't like to do scan backs either. I have an entire stack of checks that we have to open. I mean, you can't see it, but that's a pretty large hand opening thing, uh, hand open there that I have to scan so that the notaries at Unlimited Inc. can get paid because I got to go to deposit them. And I have to scan them over to Hannah so she can double check my math that they've all been counted. I don't even like scanning that, but it's a process that has to be done. And if I didn't do it, none of our notaries would get paid. So you have to think it's part of your business process. And when you put your mind mindset in the fact that it's part of your business process, that's when it becomes a little less of a problem for you and more of a solution for your clients and will bring more business for you. With that said, I want to share my screen here. Um, I tried to make it a little funny at the beginning, but I want to start showing you what a mobile notary card looks like. And uh, let's see if I can share this screen. Ms. Beth, I just wanna make sure you can see that. No. Uh, let's see. Let me take spotlights off, maybe that's. It shouldn't be affected by that, but. Let me know if you can see it. You can see it, Edie? Can you see it, Ms. Beth, as well? Um, I think I have to take the spotlights off because I'm on, um, I'm doing the recording, so hang on two seconds. Okay, I can see a couple people's faces, so I'm just going to ask, uh, Ms. Angela, can you see the shared screen? You can shake your head yes or no. You can? Okay, I see, I see a lot of people shaking their head yes, Ms. Beth, so it may be because you're the presenter. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play that video there. Yeah, it won't record. Uh, definitely at a notary public's house because there's a notary public sign in the window. Let's see what notary public house we're actually at oh wait is that miss beth hat who it could be is this your car um it, it it has to be because it says you're beth and that says hat <laughs> why, don't, why don't you show us about your mobile it's vehicle my car <laughs> so if some of you have in the past saw my big convert commercial van that had the actual desk inside all of the drawers printer sitting on the desk that was uh, icing on the cake. I no longer have that van. It had bad juju <laughs> with flat tires. Since I've moved into spending more than 50% of my time training, I've downgraded my vehicle. So now I've got a mobile office that's going to look a lot like what yours probably looks like. Let's take a look. All compact right here in the back of the vehicle. Of course, I've got a printer that has a built-in scanner. Not the best thing to use on large packages, um, but it does scan, it does work, um, and a single tray. So I have a second tray that is already set for legal size that I just pull out, and I still use page separator in my car to print letter separate from legal, okay? That's my printer setup. This little handy dandy thing right here holds my paper and other items. So I've got let, uh, legal size paper and I think letter is back here in one of these areas. I also want to make sure I always have UPS and FedEx envelopes with me. This is a jacket. We don't actually need that too often here in Arizona, but sometimes you do. So it's just a little thing that's um, supposed to look wrinkled, so it's perfect for my car, right? This is power cable for my laptop, so I can plug that in when I need to. Um, and I've also got folders back here. Um, if you're printing on the fly and you get a last minute order that you need to print uh, borrower's copies for, you need something to pre present those documents to them in. You don't wanna hand it to them just in uh, a stack of papers. So folders here for them. And this little plastic tablecloth has saved my butt more times than I can count. This goes over a picnic table if you're signing in a park or at a back uh, backyard patio table that hasn't been cleaned off in six years, right? <laughs> Even in homes where kids are just making havoc of the kitchen or dining room table, no need to stress them out. Just throw this over there and get to sign them. This back here actually is a laptop desk. Um, I'd take it out, but I probably won't be able to get it back in. But this is uh, convenient for uh, people who can't get out of bed, hospital visits, those sorts of things. Um, is real handy for that. This actually looks like my briefcase that I might carry into, <laughs> there's the mailman guys, <laughs> that I might carry into uh, a signing, but that's not what this is. This is actually my little office back here. These are all my drawers that I might have in my office, and it holds everything I might have in the drawers in my office. Now, Ms. Beth, you, you said this was, uh, what, what kind of case is this? This is actually, it's termed a train case, camera case, or makeup case. So you can kind of envision the makeup brushes being in these little pockets here, Got right? It. So, but that's what this is. And all of these dividers, guys, are, yeah. um, all of these dividers are movable. So you can move them around and create areas um, that are perfect for whatever size you need. Binder clips are here. Um, I've got some extra um, pens for people who have trouble holding pens, older people, people with disabilities. Can we zoom in on that again? That was actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is a pen. This is a pen for people who have trouble holding a pen. This is how this operates. Okay. It Perfect. helps to stabilize it for them. I also have fat pens 
very helpful for people with Parkinson's, a little bit of shake going on. This kind of stabilizes their hand. It's a very heavy weighted pen form and a large, large grip for them. Um, you're also gonna want some extra pens, black and blue, so make sure you have plenty of those. Other things you might have in your office would be a thumb drive. You never know when you're gonna need a thumb drive. Power bank. Extra power when you need it, guys. You always need a power bank. This is just a screen wipe. We all have people touching our iPads and laptops and stuff going on, so we wanna keep those clean and dirt free. This actually, this little guy is just a um, collection of adapters that you might need for whatever electronic device you have that needs to be hooked up and charged. This can probably get you pretty far in getting that done. You're also gonna want one of these if you're carrying something into a house and the power is dying. This is an outlet for USB connections. You can do your phone and a lot of laptops through those. Yep, yeah, phone, laptop, iPad. These are shoe covers. Have you ever been, gone to a home where they say, please take off your shoes at the door? I'm not a fan of walking through a stranger's house barefoot, but a shoe cover is a good compromise. Travis, now I can come to your house. Packing tape. I am not packing packages and sending them off. What I am using this for is if I have a FedEx or UPS folder that's kind of overstuffed, there's a real good chance it's gonna split and spill its contents before it gets where it's going. Poly packs over a cardboard folder work really well if you don't have that. Tape. Tape that puppy up. Tiny little stapler. And let's make a disclaimer that we don't staple documents in loan signings. Yeah. Um, that's... No, but there are some things you may want to staple. Mm -hmm. Always got to have a stapler. Tape flags. Post-it notes. Just think in terms of what you have in your office and then just fill this case with it. Um, power cables, charging cables, paper clips, business cards, ever important. Wax for your fingers. Don't wanna be licking your fingers and flipping pages. Extra ink pads for your notary stamp. Never get stuck where you um, can't re-ink your notary stamp. Some of your stamps take liquid ink. These are pre-inked stamp pads. Extra finger printer. Um, not required in Arizona, California on certain real estate documents, you have to do thumbprints. I do fingerprints for everybody regardless. I do too, and I'd like to make a disclaimer about the fingerprints. For those of you that charge people online, um, notaries can often get a charge back uh, even though they sign your journal, but um, even with that signature, they can win a chargeback on the fees that they pay you. That fingerprint uh, that we require the notaries to, when they do general notaries here, we always ask them to get a fingerprint and we have won every chargeback for every notary who's ever had that thumbprint because there's no denying when they yeah. have your thumbprint on that page. Yeah, it's a good CYA. Um, sanitizing wipes. Um, also good for cleaning off the fingers before and after you do that thumbprint. You also might want to wipe down your pens, whatever that situation is. We talked about the pen stash here. There's a little flashlight as well. Scissors in the event that you need them for whatever reason. And then I've always got something for the kids tucked away in my bag. These are just little fun pens for the kids. So this is not the bag that I carry in to my signing. It's my desk drawers because it's got all of those little compartments. And it also has this area. You're gonna wanna keep an extra notary journal just in case you, um, it, anything could happen. You could be at your last page and not realize it or somebody could spill their sweet tea on your journal and you're gonna have to retire the rest of that book and start a new one. You'll have something to go to. I keep extra certificates here in my briefcase that I carry into the signing, it has acknowledgements, jurats, and credible witness affidavits. Those are the three most commonly used items at a signing table. 
but then I have everything else in here. So anything that is compliant for my state, I'm gonna have a certificate here, okay? And those could go back here, but this just kind of keeps them a little bit cleaner and less dog-eared, so I just keep them in this case. And there you have it. That's my mobile office and my desk drawers. Thanks for being here. All right, guys. Um, one thing that Miss Beth, um, I, I was talking to her about is keeping all the forms that you need from your state uh, as a uh, as a notary. And I, I have to tell you, I hear from notaries all the time uh, when they get to a signing that uh, they say, you know, I, I need to go back and get an acknowledgement or a jurat. That's part of having a mobile office, um, carrying those forms with you. Um, I've been guilty of it as well. I don't sit here and pretend that, you know, this hasn't been a part of my past. It's definitely not a part of my future. Um, but it, it is a part uh, of your job to keep those state forms with you. When somebody uh, says, hey, I need to get a no document notarized, you, you may need to pull out an acknowledgement or a jurat. Um, you may go to an assignment and find out that they don't really need an acknowledgement, they need a jurat, or you may go to an assignment and find out they need a, a, a certification by a copy if you can do that in your state. So you wanna keep all of your state forms uh, available. Another thing that we wanna make sure that you notaries uh, that are uh, training with us here at Notary Stars understand is you are a notary, not an attorney. So do not keep power of attorney forms or even your local state forms um, in your car. Now you can direct signers to say here, you know, like in Arizona, we, our secretary of state has, does a really great job of creating a life care planning package for those who need it. They can print it right off their website. You can say the state has them available, but you may want to shop it, shop around to make sure it gives what you want to give. But as a notary, you can't give a signer uh, a specific form. Believe me, if I could, I'd be selling them all day at the county jail here because we do a lot of jail signings in Arizona. Um, but you can't suggest the form or tell them or sell it to them as a notary. Maybe some states, if you have a state that says that, please let us know at the end when we go into Q&A. But most states, I would say you're bordering up the line. If you have a power of attorney that you sell, uh, even if that was created by an attorney, you're now telling that person this form will work for you and creating a window for someone to come back and sue you. It's better to just be the notary and take that mobile notary fee than it is to create a document or suggest a document that could come back and bite you later. Um, so I wanted to make that clear when we we're talking about keeping those forms in your car, that you're not just keeping forms that you can sell that are only really the ones that will help you with your career. Okay, um, now I want to go to Travis. Travis, are you ready? I am. All right, so Travis is going to show you a different version of a mobile setup. He's going to hyper focus on the printer and the scanner ver uh, version of that. And then Edie's going to actually walk, walk us through hers as well. So I'm going to put Travis on full spotlight here so he can kind of show you what his mobile setup is like. And Travis, you can start talking any second you're ready. Okay, perfect. All right, awesome. So I handled things a little bit differently when I was um, a notary for my short tenure before Ronnie grabbed me up. And, you know, at that time, I didn't want to invest in a full dual tray printer for the car. Like, I didn't know if this notary thing was going to work out for me or not, right? So, you know, I didn't want to invest a bunch of money for, for, you know, that much uncertainty. So I really wanted to um, make it, um, you know, as inexpensive as possible, but uh, as efficient. And when I got into this industry, like I figured every mobile, I figured every notary out there that did remote loan signings, like had equipment to print. I find out it's very few. So that's really going to give you the edge in this industry, especially if, you know, you want to do this full time and really kill it is make a living because, you know, you want to keep in mind what's the old saying time is money. You know, you're going to spend a ton of time driving home, printing documents, driving home, scanning, driving back to FedEx. If you can cut that portion out of your day, that's going to open you up 
you know, for two, three, you know, plus more signings a day. Um, so my, my, uh, my rig was um, not as sophisticated, but, and I'm working off my laptop, so I'm going to have to hold some of this stuff up here. So this was my mobile scanner. Now, when I say mobile scanner, it's not like this is a designated mobile scanner. You know, really all that means is you are scanning mobily. You know, it doesn't have to be like a designated, you know, brand mobile scanner. I don't even know if there is a thing, but my scanner here that I used, it's a Brother ADS 2700W. They probably have a more revised uh, model of it. And I'll hold it up here. That's the one I have, Travis. Okay. So this is it. Fits in the palm of my hand. So it's nice, lightweight. It fit in my backpack. Um, it doesn't have a battery. It has a plug. So, and I'll kind of get to what I used for power. As, like I said, I did it economically and I didn't have power in my car. But this is it. Now, the reason I got this one is because I did get the Epson W4500 initially, but it didn't read, my Surface Pro didn't read the, uh, the scanner because of the processor in the Surface Pro. So I needed to get one with a jump drive right in the back, right here. That way I can scan, upload it to the jump drive, pull it out, and then put it in the uh, USB on my uh, Surface Pro and upload it to my computer from there. But nice and lightweight, they're not cheap. And what I'll say, you guys, don't try to cut corner on a, uh, on a scanner. I a decent scanner is probably going to run you $300 plus. And if I could, I could show you some of what some of these scans look like on crummy scanners that, you know, we come across at uh, Unlimited Ink. So invest in a good one. But this thing was awesome. Um, and this survived through a summer in my car in Phoenix, Arizona. So, you know, it's, uh, it's good quality equipment. The nice thing about it, too. Let me plug it back in here. It's really easy to use. It's probably not going to work after that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's got a digital interface on it. So the menus are really easy to navigate. Um, when you get a scanner, though, you want to make sure that it will scan mixed legal and letter um, because some scanners will not uh, scan legal. Most of them are going to scan letter, but some of them will only scan legal and letter separately. This one does both. Uh, this so this thing was really really awesome and super easy to use. Now, hey Travis, my, you, yes, you have a question in the chat, and I want. Okay, what do I have here? I think it's a good time to interject this because I don't want it to get lost. Anisha asked, "What watt is your inverter?" And I want to let you guys know that Travis, the version that we're doing right now, Travis actually takes this into the signer's home right uh, yeah start, stops at a starbucks Edie will go over inverters later because i believe that's her setup but these devices are actually you know you can fit them in your hand or on your on your on your bag these are devices that you can actually print from the signer's table so you can have different types of setup as a mobile notary you don't have to have inverters in your car um, and those sorts of things travis is presenting to you something that doesn't require you to have a watt inverter in your car uh, so you can keep going, Travis. I just didn't want that to get buried. No, and no, that's a good point because, and I would tell the signers too. I'd be like, look, I got your signing. It needs to ship out today. I need a power outlet when I show up. Would you mind? And, you know, it's kind of awkward at first to kind of show up with a, uh, a scanner and you'll see the printer here in a second, like in a, in a bag. But the people that you are going to be executing these documents with, they're going to think it's really neat. Like most people don't know this is a thing, right? That people carry around a printer and a scanner in their bag and go around and sign documents. It's a job that a lot of people never even heard of before. So, you know, and it's all about presentation too. You know, I would get the signings three hours before I would already be on the road, even two hours, one hour. And I would call them. I'm like, look, I see you're, uh, you know, I'm your notary, do the whole introduction. I'm like, look, 
I just got your uh, your documents and uh, your order. I do understand that it is funding tomorrow and I do need to make FedEx cutoff today. Um, your lender and title, they want scans um, on the uh, closing package. And I have a mobile printer. Would you mind if I uh, borrow our power outlet when I show up? It'll just take five minutes to print out the package. And most of them are like, you know, they're just excited that, you know, there's somebody out there that has that type of capability to show up to their place and get them closed on their home. So I've never like shown up and somebody's, you know, taken issue of that because these people are ready to close. Um, but carry around a power strip. That's what I had in my backpack as well. You know, just a, you know, three, four plug power strip so you can plug everything in. Okay, the next one is my mobile printer. Let me unplug it here. And guys, that um, scanner that Travis has, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the same one I have. And I do the same thing. And there's times when I know that I'm gonna have to scan back 125 pages. And I don't wanna do that on what I have in my car because it's not fast. That's an all in one unit. Those scanners are typically much slower than a standalone scanner. Um, so I'll unplug it, throw it in my car, well not throw it, take it in my car with me if I know I'm not gonna have time in between appointments to do my scan backs and don't wanna use my all in one scanner in my car because it's too dog slow. But they're also, um, that PC interface for the brother scanner is super easy to use. You can, um, you know, put 50 pages in the hopper and scan that in, a, in less, than, less than about a minute and a half, and then go back and keep adding pages. So you don't have multiple files when you have a big file that you have to scan. That uh, brother scanner will just keep stacking it on and stacking it on and stacking it on until you have ultimately that 125 page PDF. So just fun. Yeah, that's, that's what I liked about it is you can constantly feed it. You know, I mean, it'll hold maybe, I don't know, 50, 70 pages. But, you know, when it gets about halfway through, you just put more on the stack and it'll keep going. Yeah. Um, also, I want to address two other questions that came in and then Travis, I want to get you wrapped up so we can get Edie going because we're about 40 minutes into the session at this point and um, we all of this information is very valuable. I can see all the chats that are coming in. Um, first of all, to Monique um, from Texas, do clients ever offer their own scanners or printers for you to use? So here's what I want to make a disclaimer about. First of all, we are to be using laser jet um, uh, printers for most, all, for all loan signings. You cannot use an inkjet. The average person at their home is going to have an inkjet. What happens with inkjet is it's dusted onto the paper and then it falls off over time. Laser jet is burned into the paper and stays there much longer, not saying that it doesn't fade over time as well. That's also why when you run inkjet through an industrial scanner, it removes the ink or a lot of it from the paper. So title companies will get mad at you for not only uh, not having the right kind of documents, but ruining their office scanner because it puts all that dust and ink inside their industrial units. Um, so you can get blacklisted that way. I saw uh, someone else in the chat post that they, they asked that from time to time. Also, do clients ever ask to use their own scanners or printers for use? So when you scan documents, they're supposed to go back to a secure portal um, and you need to make sure that the client is also being secure with their documents, because remember, you're presiding over this. Um, if you're signing at a realtor's office and they're like, oh, I'm going to scan the documents for you, you need to get written permission from title that that's okay. Um, they're trusting you with your signer's information. Uh, we have a great article on Notary Stars about not using anyone else's mobile devices. A lot of times, industrial units inside of offices will store that information, and even the realtor may not be aware of it. You as a signing agent are in control and need to make sure that you're not putting yourself in jeopardy that another realtor is not going to walk up in their shared office space and see your client's information or a vendor might come in and service that machine and be able to take all that credit card information and financial information from your signer. So just be very careful about using other devices. This is also, you know, 
to protect yourself. So Travis, I want you to go ahead. I just wanted to chime in. On, oh, one last thing. One of the notaries also said, um, any Texas notaries here with mobile setup that survives 100 degree, uh, 110 degree heat. Uh, I, I'm in Arizona, so I got you beat on heat. Uh, yeah. No matter where you are. <laughs> Um, 125, 128 degree heat. Sometimes I wonder if my tires are going to pop. These machines have never failed me and I've left them in my car overnight for 125 degree heats. I don't advise it. You take what you need for the day, you load it up, you're a business, you take what you're out. You know, truck drivers do the same, I'm not comparing us to truck drivers, but we have a business. Um, it is very minimal to ask you to do if you're worried about the heat, but I've left mine in the car for several days. <laughs> Funny story. I left everything in my car. I always tell people in Phoenix, if you leave your car unlocked, um, it's really your fault if anything gets stolen. I had someone break into my car in Phoenix. They stole everything um, from my car, um, except for the mobile printer and the, the, the thing, but they opened up like all the components of the printer. I guess they thought I was hiding something in there and all the ink, but they left it. And it still worked just fine. And it was exposed to air because they had broke my window. No problems inside that car at all. Um, and I was very thankful that they didn't take my $80 printer. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Travis, if you want to go ahead and wrap up your segment there. Sure. So this is my mobile printer. It's really not a mobile printer. It's a desktop printer. But it's the, what is it? The Brother 2300D. So this is it right here. It's a single tray. Amazing. I feel like I'm a showcase on the prices right here. QVC, Travis. <laughs> um, let me take the tray out here. So not our lovely model Travis will be. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know you guys. I get it all the time. So here's the tray. Now it collapses out legal and letter. You know, quality plastic components is everything is made with. Um, so it's expanded to legal right now. And there's just a little slide button. Sometimes you can work with it. Used it so many times. There we go. And then, boom, collapses the letter. And that's it. Um, very easy to use. I don't even think I installed a driver for this thing to work correctly in the uh, in my computer. But uh, did you want me to show them the page separator real quick? No, page separator actually has its own tutorial. Um, okay. If you're interested in page separator, it divides the documents. It's available on the home page of Notary Stars all the way at the bottom. Um, but uh, page separator has its own. I mean, once you go to it, they teach you how to use it. So it, it's not something that we should go into really. Okay. But yeah, I mean, that's my setup. It was just that and that and a uh, power strip and a bag that I put it in. And, you know, if any of you have, you know, challenges carrying, you know, anything heavy, you can go get a little $10 dolly from Staples to wheel it around. Just be respectful of people's houses and they'll be wheeling your dolly around on their carpet and everything. But that's what I used. And, you know, that will increase your signings. And, you know, what I, my closing words with it is it's not just late documents. This 2300D, you guys have saved my butt and Ronnie chewing me out many a times because I have got to the signing table. You run out of the door in your dual tray printer. You didn't realize that it, it didn't finish printing. You just ran out of paper. You're missing pages. Some of the pages didn't print right or title calls you with a last minute CD or a settlement statement. And all of a sudden you're the hero because you got a mobile printer and they're gonna remember that, okay? So that's my recommendations, um, you know, not too expensive and good enough. So that's super, that's two different ways to do a mobile setup. One like Travis has that is um, grab it and take it into the house, plug it in and, and start your process. One is doing it from your car. Um, and that could either be through an, a full service. I don't do um, an inverter anymore because the vehicle I have now actually has an outlet 
uh, in the car that supplies just enough power to run that little printer and, and or a scanner. But doesn't Edie have a different setup, Ronnie? She does, and right before that, I'm gonna be looking, um, I'm gonna be looking, I actually have a, a durable one here. But for years, I used a Postmate delivery bag, and they do sell them on Amazon. The one Travis has, I used a Postmate delivery bag, and I, I ordered Postmates, and I noticed that bag looks like it could fit my printer, and it was actually a perfect fit, and the cushion and the insulation was perfect to carry that printer everywhere I wanted to go. Uh, I have a different one now, and I'll I'll bring it out to show you guys uh, when Edie's done. But uh, yes, Edie has a much uh, different. Um, Set up, uh, Edie, are you ready to kind of share your setup? Go for it. All right, you are spotlighted. All right, I am going to get my husband who is going to become my tripod for this evening uh, into position and I'm gonna be switching my camera over so that I can stand in front of my system. So bear with me for a moment, please. All right, so I'm actually going to be showing you everything that I have actually between my car and what I carry into my signings that I go into. And I am 100% completely mobile. And just to kind of go off of a few of those items uh, with regards to what uh, Ronnie had said, having a, a mobile setup really can save everything, not only for your clients, it can also save everything for your um, signers, it can save it for the title offices. I don't know how many times that I have been in a signing where I actually received the wrong package. And so I was having to make phone calls to the title offices and to the lenders to say, I need the right documents. So can you please get those to me because I can print them right here and right now. And I have shocked every single one that I have mentioned this to. Then the other thing that you also want to keep in mind, too, is that if you have ever been at a signing table and you do not have an extra set of copies for a refinance file and you have your right of rescission or that right to cancel document and your signers mistakenly put a signature or start their signature on that wrong spot, how can you save it? Well, I can save it by going back out to my car if necessary and printing it. So I have this lovely little beast of the printer right here, which is a dual tray. And this comes in and out every single day because unfortunately with where I live, I don't have the ability to leave something in my car because my car will be broken into. Um, but this is actually pretty much the exact spacing that I have because I do have a Prius. And the argument that I had with my husband is I could actually not do an inverter. And so we ended up going with an Ego uh, power station that has the ability for removable batteries that are chargeable. I have spare batteries as well, so I can be on the road for days on end if necessary. But then the other thing is too, is that this also has the ability to not only plug in for your AC power and DC power, but also to charge for your, um, for your outlets as far as USBs. And that could be for your phone or otherwise. But you just simply turn this on and plug things in. Now, as far as my setup is concerned, I actually have, apologies, stop moving around. <laughs> Um, so sorry, I thought that I had my little power strip in here. Um, but I actually have a power strip that I can plug all of my machinery into all at once. Now, the other thing that you also want to keep in mind when it comes to getting something for your vehicle to be able to power all of your equipment is what kind of initial power draw are you going to be having with regards, especially to your printer? Because for something like with what I have, which is the Brother 6200, um, 
it does an initial power draw of I believe 3,200 watts, which can actually blow almost all inverters or all power abilities that you might have. So if you're going to get an inverter for your vehicle instead of something like this, make sure that it's capable of actually handling that initial power draw because otherwise you could fry your battery as far as your car is concerned. And for my Prius, in order for us to have had an inverter, we would have had to hook it up to our hybrid battery to be able to be capable of that kind of power, substan substantial sustainability, but yeah, he said no. So this was the compromise. Um, the other thing too, is that in order to be able to hook up everything all at once, I actually have a little USB adapter that plugs directly into my computer so that I can actually hook everything up as needed. And then I can go ahead and print my documents and I can go ahead and scan my documents. Now for my setup, I have the Epson 500 uh, SW, uh, w um, that is for my go to. And the reason for this is, is that if this is connected directly into the computer, it runs so much faster than trying to hook it up through your Wi Fi setup. But then also, if I'm going into a signing office and I or into a home and I don't have very much space, I do have a portable 300 as well, which also does color. The problem that I have with this one in comparison to this one as my primary go-to is that this does not have a pull-out tray to be able to hold onto your documents, but I have the ability to use either option for whatever my needs are. Edie, can I interrupt you for one quick second? Go for it. You have a question in the chat. It wants to know what model number is the Ego Power Station? This is the Ego Power Station. I believe it's 3,200 or 3,000, but it's the Nexus power station. And it is an amazing beast, I, I have got to say. It can be a little bit heavy with the batteries hooked up onto it. If you, especially if you have all four batteries hooked up to onto it, it's definitely over 30 pounds. If you carry it without any batteries, it's just about 20 pounds, so it's a little bit lighter. But this is actually waterproof. It has water resistance to it. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and, and be able to do that. If not, just simply throw a towel over it if it happens to be a rainy day, which in Washington, the joke is it rains a lot, depends. All right, so going on as far as my vehicle is concerned, I do have the occasion where power is out, storms happen. And so I have my little emergency light that I can actually take into my signings or have it available if I'm doing a nighttime signing on the trunk of my car so that everybody's able to see the documents. So this is actually something that can be a huge benefit if it is something that you wanna consider also having in your vehicle. The other thing that stays in my vehicle, which is a little very similar to what Ms. Beth has, is I have a container that holds all of my different sizes of my binder clips, including my sanitizer, hand sanitizer, as well as my Lysol spray. Every single one of these containers are different sizes with regards to all of my binder clips. And I am a firm believer in binder clips so that no document, no check, no cashier's check, nothing can get lost. It is all nice and secure with your, um, with your package. And it all fits very nicely into this and it gets sealed into the back of my car. Now, I also have post-it notes. I have different sizes depending on the needs and notes that might uh, be needed to go with the return of your package or when you're in your signing and your signers have difficulty with remembering dates or how to do their abbreviations or their initials because they're doing um, a, a personal representative situation or a power of attorney situation, you'll have that ability to give them those subtle reminders on what it is that they need to do, how they need to write those initials. 
The other thing that also comes with my signing bag is I do have my little sticky notes as well that I can also put onto the papers if they have challenges with seeing what it is that they need to sign or where they need to sign, because sometimes they can be a little bit hidden. The other thing that I also have as well is I carry in my wallet a guide for those that are visually challenged. And these can actually be purchased very easily and actually pretty inexpensive on Amazon. And all that they do is just actually place the signature in between that blank space and they're able to place their signature on that paper as that guide to help them. And this has actually come in handy on multiple, multiple occasions. I also have a lovely hand, um, my, my wipes uh, container that holds all of my Lysol wipes. It's waterproof, it is fantastic. I'm able to wipe everything down. I'm also able to wipe my pens down. It can impress your signers when you're at your table because they're like, oh, wow, you're doing a great job. Or occasionally you get an ID where the employment of your signer makes those IDs a little bit on the dirty side and you're not gonna be able to take a very clear or clean uh, upload as far as those IDs to be able to send over to the title office when they're asking for those IDs to be returned. So this also comes in exceedingly handy. The other thing that I do have is I do have a couple of different signing uh, notary books. Uh, right now, my preference happens to be this one right here. There is many options. So depending on your state requirements, please keep in mind, you do want to go ahead and go with those options with regards to your state. Over here, I have a couple of containers that hold my extra paper. Unfortunately, I have not found one that holds my legal size. So my legal size just goes into one of my spare containers as far or my spare boxes with regards to my toner. So that's fantastic. And the solution that Ms. Beth had when it comes to various signing surfaces simple cardstock that you can purchase anywhere off of supply or even on Amazon. And then you can go and get this laminated. I went over to my local FedEx to go and do that. And it was fantastic. And I pull these out, especially when I have like the picnic tables or I have those newer tables with the rough surfaces. You guys know what I'm talking about, where if they write just a little bit too hard on those documents. It's going to destroy those documents. So this comes in super, super handy also. And I wipe it down each time that I have to take these out. Now, again, I am 100% mobile. So I have a device that holds on to my computer as a tablet. And this just simply stretches out so that it'll be able to fit my, my surface, which is beautiful. And this actually goes on to the back of my headrest, just like so. Just giving this in as an example. The other thing is too, is that with Washington State, we have some horrible weather sometimes. Sometimes it's raining pretty heavy, sometimes it's super windy. I also have this that also hooks up onto the back of my headrest that I place my scanner on so that I'm able to be in the back seat of my car and keep those documents nice and safe. And I don't have to worry about them blowing across the parking lot or them getting so destroyed with the rain that they're just unusable. So this comes in super super handy. Also easily found online, such as Amazon or other online uh, sources. Let's see, I do not believe in wheeled containers. And so this is the bag that I take in. And this bag also holds my ID, holds all of my pins, holds all of my wipes. It also holds all of my refills for my pins. It also holds onto extra masks in case the signer wants to wear a mask and they can't find theirs. It also holds onto my keys, holds onto my stamp, 
It also holds onto my 10 key and my power supply for my computer in case it runs out of juice. All of this comes in my car. And this is what I bring in and out of my home on a daily basis. This is what my setup is. There are many options that are out there when it comes to some, toward, some sort of a power supply. Look it up and find out what is going to be best for your needs. If you wanna do something different, there's also the uh, Net Zero or Goal Zero Yeti that can handle the power draw. There is also different inverters and they kind of look like a grilled aluminum case that is going to be bolted into the car so that it stays in place, but it'll have multiple plugs in it that you'll be able to plug things into. That's what an inverter is, but it'll actually be hooked directly to your car battery. So just kind of keep in mind as to what your desires are and what's going to work for your needs. Sometimes those inverters will work for people, sometimes they won't. So that's why I happen to have this set up. Um, any other things that you can think of, Ronnie? No, um, I'm actually, you know, I've seen your setup before, but I'm actually really happy to have it here tonight because it's so different. Um, you know, honestly, I just want to point out the difference between your setup and mine and Travis's setup is a personal preference, um, but it's just as honorable. I mean, Edie has done all this to create her mobile office because it suits the way that she wants to run her mobile business. I personally wouldn't do it the way that Edie's doing it, but I know a lot of notaries that do um, have the inverters and all of the products that she has. And I also know a lot that have what Travis says, the result is the same when you, it, it really comes down to the preference of how you want to do it. Neither way is right. Um, but I will tell you that in between uh, the, the two um, options that you have here, I see a lot of excuses of to not have either. And, you know, it, at some point you have to kind of pick one avenue if you want to take that financial leap and bring more business in. And I'll tell you between Travis and Edie, Edie's been an instructor. She's also my account rep for Seattle at Unlimited Ink Notary. And, uh, you know, now becoming a pioneer with Ron, uh, she's probably one of the most sought after notaries. I have to fight for her sometimes to work with Unlimited Ink. And, you know, between her and Travis, you know, it, it could have gone either way. I mean, no, no offense, Travis, but Travis was out banging out just as many orders as Edie was. It was like a tie every month. And I think I saw them do just for Unlimited Ink before we brought Travis on as a co-owner, probably about equal uh, amount of signings and, you know, really out there banging them out and banging them out right because training comes first. This is just a bonus to the training to have that mobile printer and mobile scanner. But once, once you know, um, sorry, my little mascots back here are barking. But uh, once you once you know that you're doing it right, uh, the setup that you have is is really up to you. I will go ahead and add one more thing. Ronnie is correct. This became pivotal for me the moment that I started taking on signings on the last minute while I was actually still on the road or that I wasn't able to get back home because I'm a notary that I do truly cover my entire state. And depending on where I am or how long it might take to get to something, if you've ever been in downtown Seattle traffic or, or rush hour traffic, you know how brutal those moments can be when you're trying to rush back home so that you can get those documents scanned or get them dropped in time and you don't have that ability to do so. Having this kind of a setup, having equipment in your vehicle allows you that additional freedom to pick up those extra orders, to increase your monthly income, your monthly flow, and just helping you really stand out in the crowd of the thousands of other notaries that are out there across the nation. So just kind of keep them in mind. Also, all of this equipment, the fantastic part of it is it is all a write-off. It is a part of your business. So if that is an issue for you to take that jump and take that dive and, and have that cost I promise you, my ego, which is 
probably one of the most expensive items that I have purchased. I replaced those funds and more in less. Okay, you're talking about the power bank and not the ego. The, not the, the, ego. the power station that I have. Yeah. It's, it's called an ego. <laughs> yep, I, I replaced those funds and more in less than a month's time. So interestingly enough, guys, it'll also help you um, manage your schedule better mm -hmm. and take more signings, even if it's not a last minute signing. If you look at an offer that's coming over and you're saying, wow, that's on the other side of town of where I'm going to be so-and-so, I can take that order because it's on my way back. And then something happens and you don't get documents before you leave for all your appointments that day. Now you're starting to sweat and you're thinking, as soon as I finish that appointment, I've got to run back home to my office and print documents if they come, if they even come, before I can turn around and keep going, you know, 40 minutes in, in the other direction. Or maybe it's in the same area, you'd have to come home and print documents, go right back to the same area you were in when you maybe were three miles away from the next appointment, all because you didn't get documents until the last minute. Now, yeah. one more quick item. I'm sure, jump go ahead. Here. I was actually scanning a file to submit the same day for because it was funding the same day. And one of the escrow officers actually happened to come outside to grab something from her vehicle. And she realized that it was me and it dawned on her how I was able to complete all of their signings for their office as quickly and as efficiently as I was. And she actually went into her office, drove everyone out so that they could take a look so that they could see what an actual true motor, mobile notary is. I and have a photo from that day to back her up on this because they sent the photo to me. Um, they sent a photo with her posing with all of the equipment. And I was like, what is this? Uh, but that was that exact day. And I know who that escrow officer is. Yeah, that was fun. Guys, I want to add in one more uh, tidbit. And then I want to give some room for Q&A. I know that we are going a little bit over tonight for an hour session. Uh, but I want to, I'm going to turn off my background so that you can actually see things. So you're just going to see a green screen back here, but it won't show up. I tried to test it while E was talking. So give me one second to turn off my virtual background. So um, I want to show you this and I posted them in the chat. This is actually the device that I use to hold the mobile scanner. Uh, I posted it in the chat and any of the products that we talked about tonight, this is called Gator Cases. And I just want to show you that the mobile scanner that I use um, I have my Epson and then the mobile scanner that I use now because I'm in a different city. This is the one I was using in Phoenix before I got the second one for Tucson. Um, this is the mobile scanner and it fits right in here. And what I love about this device is it actually has little padding inside. So it protects that scanner. So you can see that good inch thick of padding in it. It's like a memory foam type thing. So it fits right down inside of that. Um, this scanner save my rear end, you have no idea how many times. Um, and not just because people need scan backs, just because I need to get to another appointment and get those scan backs to them and they couldn't wait for me to get to another. Coming from a signing agency's perspective or even a title's perspective, when you say, I took your appointment and you're gonna have to wait till 1130 until I'm home and off the road to do scans, you're not gonna get business in the future. They expect you to have these uh, these items with, it, with you. Um, would they know you're not the only appointment they have today, but that is the wrong mentality to take. Um, there is no, uh, there, there are no, uh, there are no favors you're doing for anyone. There will be a notary who does it the right way and they will get found. So we're bringing this up so that it can be part of your journey. Now, if you're only servicing one file a day, you probably can get those scanbacks to them pretty quickly and 30 minutes is 30 minutes. But if it's a crunch time in the morning, you got to get that loan funded. It's a big problem. Now for the mobile scan, uh, mobile printer, those single trays, I posted this as well as a good example. Let's see if I can get this all in here. This is a, uh, now these are called, this brand is called R, uh, RG or Rugged. Um, 
you'll notice that inside of here as well, there's also that padding to kind of keep it into place. Um, you can install Velcro in there as well to kind of keep on the side so you can actually put Velcro along your mobile printer. I'm actually using the mobile printer uh, at the moment as a physical desk because you guys know that I'm in the middle of a move and working from a remote location. Uh, but uh, you can actually install Velcro on the sides of your uh, printer to keep it from moving while it's inside this case and you just pop it right off from the sides. This device, you, you know, and you guys know, I'll stand up right now and show you, I've shown it on camera many times. I started all of this initially because I got ran over by a car while being a loan signing agent and broke my back in three places. If I can carry it, anybody can carry it. Uh, I have three vertebrae. I'm still pending surgeries. I go to, I get a massage every week. I go to the chiropractor every three days. I keep moving, but I have major back issues that most people, I mean, if you see me, you don't, you probably wouldn't know because I get epidurals as well. But if I can make these things happen, anybody can make them happen because I have true physical limitations when it comes to carrying devices like this. So I wanted to show, you know, how I carry that around uh, as well. And again, the Postmates bag was a, my original bag, but then I found that and it looked a little bit better than a Postmates bag. But the well, Postmates that, bag was good. Yeah, that padding also can provide some insulation as well, guys, not just protecting from bumps and potholes in the road, but um, insulating it from the cold and heat for sure. One of the things that I use to avoid the bumps and, and potholes is those foam kitchen mats. Um, I actually have that underneath all of my equipment to help because I know that's been also a concern that has been brought up a couple of times by other notaries uh, wondering how it is that I keep it from getting jarred. Okay, guys, um, the time has come for you to raise your hands. Yeah. Uh, we will have probably about, about another 15 minutes of Q&A. Um, um, so if you have questions, please go ahead and get those hands raised. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start answering those questions. Um, we're going to cut it off right at 630 uh, Arizona time tonight. So that's about 12 minutes. Uh, we love staying here all night. And you guys know, but they're starting to make me promise to keep it down to a certain time because apparently they need to sleep and eat. But I will stay here all night if you guys want. Um, <laughs> but also YouTube, uh, it gets it just kind of gets a little long at a certain point. And we do it every month. And we have training every day. So we're always available for you. I feel bad trying to start to like rush it. But I also, I also understand, you know, you guys have to sleep and eat, but we can talk about it all night if you want. Um, we can, I, maybe I should have a Ronnie Lee summer party one day and we all just sit up and tell notary stories all night. Anyways, our first question from Miss uh, Pam Adam in Glendale, California. Unmute. Hi. Well, am I unmuted? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I have, I work off a of Mac. And I've been dealing with issues uh, with my brother, uh, 5850, I think 525850. Anyway, it's brand new. I've only had it probably three weeks. And I've been back and forth with brother and everything seems to be okay. And I just got off the phone today again with Acrobat to make sure all that was okay. But I'm still having trouble getting it to print on the right size paper when it's supposed to. Um, I had this conversation with Ronnie Stars this week, and Travis will tell you, uh, Mac is not your device in this industry. It does not play well with others. Um, Mac computers are generally for people who are in design work. Um, they're working with, you know, uh, designing, they're doing web design, they're doing house designs. It's a really a higher end computer and it's never been designed to work with all of the other products very well. Mm -hmm. Works well with Adobe if that's all you need to do. But And for the loan signing industry, industry, when you have to use mobile printers, mobile scanners, we find very few notaries who, who actually um, have success with Mac computers. Now, I'm not saying that there's not. There's, right. I mean, I don't want people to come back and be like, I did. But, <laughs> much fewer, many fewer, however the word, I don't want to sound uneducated, but um, far fewer have a good experience using a Mac, getting all of the devices connected and printing properly. Okay. 
so if I may add on that, Ronnie, is that okay? Absolutely, please. Okay, so I am curious if this works because there's a notary we work with out here. Uh, she has an apple and there was a time she was having printing issues uh, and it was working fine and we couldn't figure it out. And I had a, uh, an apple when I first started and I couldn't get the thing to work. Downloaded the drivers, mm -hmm. okay, caboodle. Yeah, never did it, right? And I mean, that's just a, a small area of uh, my problems with my uh, Apple computer. But anyway, so try this. Because um, I asked her the other day, because we had this question two times. And I asked her, I'm like, did you ever get your printer settings fixed on your, and I'm reading the text right now. I'm like, did you ever get your printer settings fixed? And she goes, here's the thing. Make sure you download the drivers. And she right. goes, apparently the magic move is the pages have to be rotated upside down for it to work. So I am curious if this will work for you. So next time you print mix legal and le letter, hit control plus on the PDF, or I think Apple, mm -hmm. it's Apple shift plus, flip it upside down and then try printing, you know, make sure the right print driver is selected. It should mm -hmm. stay, you know, in your printer window, make sure the tray, uh, um, choose paper source by PDF page size is selected. Right. See if that works. Um, and cause hmm. I remember reading that a long time ago online, but I wasn't doing notary work at the time. So I just didn't take much note of it because huh. it wasn't a problem of mine anymore, but try flipping that PDF upside down and email us and let's, <laughs> I'm curious to know if that's the trick that actually makes this hmm. work. Okay. I don't have my dual tray at the house I'm living in now, so I can't hook it up to my Apple to troubleshoot it myself, but right. I'm curious to see if that'll work, uh, that'll do the trick. You've got okay. several comments in uh, the chat that says, yes, rotate it upside down. Right. Better and legal without cutting anything off, that. and it works good. If that we works, I'm gonna... confirmation that that works, we need to get an article on Notary Stars uh, to make sure it's part of the canon of knowledge because uh, it is a regular question that comes in over the phone lines. And actually, if it works, we need to create a video um, to make sure that it's part of the Notary Stars training. Uh, so, Miss, uh, if you could please contact at notarystars.com, let us know if that works. And then if it works on your word, we will get a training video out there about it. And we will make sure that the word gets out about it. So it helps all notaries out in the country. And I'll go back and add it as a link on this video. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next question is going to come from Debbie Hudson in California as well. Hi, thank you very much for taking my call. Um, I have a, a van, so I have that back area, but I don't have a, a secure trunk or even like when Beth opened her, her trunk back, there was that screen that automatically lowers to hide the equipment. I don't have any way to do that um, in my vehicle. Any suggestions for keeping my equipment safe while I'm out driving around? Do you have a hatchback? No, it's a um, like a Honda Odyssey or a Toyota Sienna. Okay, it's a hatchback then. So it lifts up, the gate, the back lifts up. Oh. It comes up. Right, but okay. there's not that, that lift tray that you had. Okay. Because there are so, seats that can fold down. So you're familiar with window sunshades for your car? Yeah. Buy the biggest one you can find, and you're going to open it up and just spread it over the top of your equipment. That'll do two things. It hides it from prying eyes, and it's going to keep the sun off of it. It'll reflect the sun. Okay. That's exactly what I was going to say. I actually didn't use a sunshade. I bought a black thermal blanket <laughs> that when I didn't have a car, this is back in the day um, before, you know, I ever started looking at cars that could do that. My car is a hatchback that has that tray. Mine's removable. So I can actually use mine as a desk and put it over into the back seat. The seats fold down as well if I have a, a busy day. But I actually just bought a black thermal blanket off Amazon for like 29 bucks. And that was my uh, screen for quite some time. And when I bought my Prius, it didn't come with the pull out um, cover. 
you, you might even wanna look into that as a potential option to see if you can buy an aftermarket that will fit into the, the pockets. You might have those pockets in the back trunk area. And it's, it's just literally a, a draw out um, cover that will hook to the trunk so that you can cover all your equipment. Yeah, like a roller shade. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. I've seen those, yeah. All right, guys, we have two more questions and just a, a little reminder before we go, we have uh, Natasha Glover. Natasha, where are you signing in from tonight? I sent a request there twice. Let's see if we can get that going. Okay, um, there we go. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, Miss Natasha, welcome. Where are you calling? Where are you oh, from tonight? Yes, I'm. I'm uh, in. I'm here in Phoenix. Um, I had a quick question. I'm coming back into the industry. Would you suggest that I get all this equipment now, or should I wait maybe a few months after doing more, after getting some more signings under my belt? I would say that once you are ready to be on the road, if you've done all the training that you feel that you need to do. Um, which my suggestion is always going to be National Notary Association, Notary Pro, and Notary Stars. Um, once you're ready, uh, it will be to your benefit to go ahead and be set up for your mobile business because at that point you need to start operating. Even if you're operating slowly with it, you'll recover those costs and you'll get used to using your equipment. So I wouldn't say wait unless you have a financial reason to wait. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate your question. And then our last question for tonight before the last little announcement is Mr. Tyrone Vaughn from Virginia. Good evening, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. I have a couple of questions. The first question that I have is in regards to when do you do your printing on the vote? Are you pulling on the side of the vote or are you printing as you're driving both <laughs> yep both i personally sometimes always, even in the driveway i personally always did it um right at the signer's home because i used to carry printers so i would print right inside their home and even if i didn't need the printer i actually carry it in with me i like, like the production value of it all and them feeling like wow this is like truly a mobile notary like i'm coming with a mobile office um, but I have stopped in the Starbucks when they said, don't tell the signer that the documents were late. Oh. Um, so I've done it both ways. Can I, can I jump in also as soon as you're done with your question, Tyrone? No, go right ahead. Oh, it was just going to be a, an add-on comment. Um, I have had a lot of print centers and office supply stores mentioned to me uh, that a lot of notaries go into their facilities to print documents don't ever do that you are not securing that confidential information so it's Thank you for that. Good. Yeah, i'm actually going to post that article um, that we wrote uh, about never using a public computer um, yeah. for, for those things i'm going to post that into the chat tonight uh, before Mr. Vaughn continues, just everybody, if you want to download the chat, use the three dots right above uh, where you would enter a chat. You can save the chat and it'll have all the links that we've posted tonight. Uh, Mr. Vaughn, what was your next question? I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, I forgot. But I, I just want to make a comment just on my own here in that, um, you know, here lately I have become that mobile notary, except for I haven't been printing. I've been doing the scanning and I've stopped at a Starbucks. I've stopped at a Panera Bread and just took my um, you know, scanner out and just set up there and did my scanning and printing. The only thing that I would add to your comment, um, Edie, is that I certainly would not use their um, internet or their Wi-Fi, okay? Yeah. Uh, so I have my own Wi-Fi that I that I have. I have a hotspot that I use as well too. Yeah. These days, those phones are able to do those mobile hotspots. Utilize your mobile hotspot; it's secure. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Do not use Wi-Fi at all. 
Yep. Just make sure you set a password for it. Um, yes. That's one thing you want to do. You don't want to have an open uh, connection without a password. Phones will give you the option to create a password. And it, I, I would suggest, you know, changing it quite often since you're out in the field um, just to secure things. Um, but yes, use your own Wi-Fi. Or if you're at the signer's home, you can use their Wi-Fi. Okay, um, do we have any other questions for tonight? While we're waiting for that last little question that may come in, I'm going to give Mr. Vaughn a time to raise his hand again, just in case. Um, but uh, I see one more question going up. But while we're doing this, I just want to make one announcement. Uh, just as a reminder, guys, we are starting to um, we are starting to add Ron training in on May 6th for the Notary Star and higher level. Uh, that will not go to Notary Star Light or free members. Um, but if you are interested in our RON training journey, we are building those modules right next to your uh, members only training. Right now, some of them may be public facing and you think you're going to have access, but um, it will be members only training as well. You will need to be a member of the site. Uh, you'll start to see these platforms uh, open up. Uh, you may not see that much in them until May 6th, but those pages have to be built for the modules to go inside of them. You'll get an idea of where the journey is going over the next couple of days to the next week. Um, but we will have our new instructor, uh, William Bumfrey, who is a very successful RON notary, uh, who will be your instructor. We already have companies writing in to come in and want to give you presentations over their platforms. We're going to have an incredible journey for you and a lot of safety training on being a RON notary. So just wanted to make sure that we got that in here. Uh, we will take two last questions now, and then we are going to wrap it up for sure. So we have uh, Tira Thorpe. Hi. Hi. So um, I am confused about the inverters because I'm, I have the Epson 500 and I don't know, I don't know um, what is the max for the using the cigarette lighter versus having to set it up via your car battery. I, I need help with the inverters. I don't understand the inverters. <laughs> Edith, I think this would be your wheelhouse. Yeah, I did a ton of research with regards to inverters. Um, there's actually several methods. The, the scanner does not do as significant as a power draw as what the printers do. And so you can even get a simple cigarette lighter plug-in inverter. Um, I think they go up to 300 watts. That will work for the scanner if you want to go ahead and do that. Um, it'll have a plug-in that you'll just stick the plug for your scanner into, and you just flip the switch to turn it on. I have one here in my home somewhere. I was actually trying to find it before I got started with uh, tonight's training, but unfortunately I wasn't able to locate it because I'm in the process of also doing a remodel here. So um, I just wasn't able to find it for you guys to show you, but look it up and, and do some research. Uh, take a look at the maximum wattage draw that the scanner will do to give you a better idea of what you will start looking for and then start pricing them out and be smart on shopping, you know, go through multiple sources. Also, if you ask at Best Buy, they'll tell you how much wattage uh, that's going to be pulling. And yep. you would, and if you ask any, you know, basically anybody at a car, what can I get out of a cigarette lighter or a battery? They're going to tell you what you can get. Uh, out of that so you can compare uh, if you're going to be able to get enough battery out of there to operate the product. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. And we're going to go on to our very last question for the night, which is Ms. Monique, uh, if you could unmute yourself there. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you for doing this because this has been on my mind. It's a bucket list item. Bucket list item for me. Um, my this main question is really just securing this equipment. I know I'm going to investigate inverters and batteries and everything, but I just want to know how to keep this secure in my vehicle. I'm in Virginia where I am. There's a lot of terms. My entire area is a gigantic circle. 
So <laughs> I'm afraid of my equipment sliding in the back of my CRV. That's a really great question. Um, so, you know, in Arizona, we have speed bumps that pop out of nowhere. I mean, you'll just be, you know, <laughs> I, you know, it's not, it's not dips in the road. It's speed bumps and there are dips in the road as well. Um, I had bungee cords that I used to secure uh, my products in as well as the cases. Um, bungee cords work really well. Uh, you can use Velcro if you um, don't mind putting that in your car. Just remember when you go to resale, you may want to use something that's the same color as your interior um, because Velcro is very hard to get back off of your car. Uh, but I've seen people secure with Velcro. I've seen people secure with bungee cords. Um, you know, you can fit things into tight spaces so that they don't move. I will tell you because of the bumps on the road, I highly recommend the bungee cords to keep your printer from jumping up in the air and coming back down and slamming down. That is a drawback and that's a very good question. Thank you. Yeah, that was my main concern because even though a lot of these printers and things may be inexpensive or on sale, I don't want to have to keep buying it. <laughs> I, I, I get you. Also, last disclaimer, um, guys, when you buy these mobile devices, please buy your square trade or now they're called other things. That'll tell you how long it's been since I bought a mobile printer, but I know it's, no, it's not called always square trade. Those little warranties, um, it saved my rear end more than once. Um, a lot of them, they don't even ask you to send back the device. They just email you a certificate and tell you to keep the old device. And then you walk into the store and buy it same day. It's happened to me twice um, where I needed to get a printer by 9 a.m. And I got it because I had that square trade. So make sure you get the square trade and you use the square trade by registering it. Um, we are out of time for questions tonight. I'm going to turn this back over to gallery view and I'm going to ask you guys if you are not in your underwear and you are not stuffing your face and you're not chasing your children around trying to get them into bed, please turn on your camera and let's do our signature wave, wave to yourself, wave to the next notary watching this replay or if you want to come back and watch this replay, make sure you give a good wave and don't forget, Miss Beth, how do you say it when you say reach back? Yeah, as you go forward in your careers, never forget to reach back and grab another notary and take them on the journey with you. You guys 100% so agree with that. Thank you for evening with, evening with us, and we will see you next month at Notary Stars Unlimited. Bye, guys.